Hi, this is Sandy from wormsandstuff.com and I want to show you in a video how my flow through bin works. Cats love them. Okay, so this is just a 13 gallon standard size kitchen garbage can. Holes are drilled in the top for extra air. Everything that you put into the bin goes into the top. You can open the lid or you can just take the lid off. So I'm going to get this out of the way. In the top of the bin, I usually cover my bedding with a sheet of newspaper. It can be dry or damp because it's winter right now and my house humidity is very low. I have been keeping the sheet of newspaper damp. Underneath the newspaper is the bedding and the worms. Just to see um, what the worms look like in here, I'm going to pull some of the bedding aside. And you'll see that the worms have eaten that piece of pumpkin there. Let's see what's in this corner. Lots of worms currently eating. They were fed just, um, I think it was yesterday I put some food in there. A lot of pomegranate skins. And here's another corner showing a lot of worms actively eating. I always bury my food under the bedding, about one to two inches down under the bedding. If I don't have enough bedding, I add more. The bedding that I like to use in my flow through worm bin is egg carton type cardboard that I tear into little pieces. And I also like to use corrugated cardboard. And again, I just um, cut that up, get it a little bit moist, and um, it's great bedding. The worms really, really go for it. Okay, let me put that lid back on. And now I want to show you the rest of the bin. The PVC pipes have one purpose. It is simply to hold the worms and the bedding up so that you have an empty space down here in this door. There is no drainage and no aeration with these PVC pipes. I have simply chosen PVC pipes because they are inexpensive, easy to get a hold of, they're strong, and they do not biodegrade, so they will last as long as the bin does. Okay, this bottom door can be held shut with a rubber band. I like to leave it open just to get some more airflow. I'm going to bring a lamp over so that we can look inside this bin. As you can see, the bottom of the bin is very simply an empty space. This is where I harvest the castings. And now what I'm going to do is attempt to show you <clears throat> the bedding and the worms resting on top of the PVC pipes. Um, hopefully I keep enough light in there. Okay, this is the inside of the worm bin looking up at the PVC pipes. The bedding and the worms simply rest on the PVC pipes. There's nothing to keep the worms in there, but they do stay in there. As you can see, I have no worms in the bottom of my bin. The beauty of this bin is that everything goes in the top and out the bottom. Harvesting is as simple as this. You put your hand in, you reach in between the PVC pipes, and you pull out the castings. You will know that the castings are done if when you when you sort through them there are no worms and no cocoons and if you smell it it just smells like pleasant damp earth you know that these castings are ready. When you're harvesting you can just keep reaching up in between the PVC pipes to pull it out and as soon as you start pulling out worms or cocoons or it doesn't smell like nice fresh earth just put it back in the top you're done for now so with the flow through bin everything goes in the top and the harvesting of the vermicompost comes out the bottom in this bin the bottom is where these pipes are and the bedding is about up halfway through the heart it's about 10 inches deep and that's pretty much your ideal depth for red wigglers Visit my website, www.wormsandstuff.com. Feel free to ask me any questions you have at sandy at wormsandstuff.com. And until then, keep vermicomposting.